Okay, I have our uh, first uh, SEC home game. Uh, very excited about that. Uh, playing a very good Mississippi State team, a uh, team that really just bottom line embarrassed us last year. Um, they just lined up and whipped us. They rushed for 349 yards, and we, and we rushed for 90. And uh, that was a tough one. Uh, our guys are real excited. You know, really, I, I told those guys we got to have a great week. Our urgency uh, has to be there. And we just got to play good, hard-nosed Auburn football for four quarters. Uh, we're playing a team that could be easily be 4-0 um, with a lot of confidence coming in here. You look at their offense, uh, their running back, he's the real deal. I mean, he's, uh, he's one of the best in the country, can break tackles. He's explosive, runs with great pad level. Um, and their quarterback, their quarterback can run. He's a run threat, just like the guy they had last uh, year. And we expect them to do that. And, of course, we also expect them to – have some play action passes. They've got some uh, receivers that uh, are pretty dynamic. Defensively, they're leading uh, our league in takeaways. Uh, that's really what stands out to me. Uh, very opportunistic. They get after you. They're a very aggressive team. Uh, just like last week, you know, there's probably a good chance we'll see quite a bit of pressure with our freshman quarterback. So we got to have answers for that. Uh, but like I said, we're playing a, a good team. Um, this is a big game for us. Our guys understand that. Uh, very excited. Our crowd's been great. Uh, really looking forward to playing in front of our crowd with everybody bringing their A game. And um, like I said, this is this is a big game. Questions? Difficult this week, maybe not quite knowing which quarterback will start. No, I mean they're they're both very good quarterbacks. I mean, and and they're both they got some similarities. I mean that's. You know they're going to run their quarterback a little bit, regardless of whichever quarterback's there. And they got to, like I said, the running back is is very impressive. Um, so you know we're we're expecting to could possibly see both, but there are some similarities. So, but they're going to run their quarterback. You mentioned that they ran so well last year. Uh, do you kind of rub nicely to your defensive guys' faces that? You look at video of last year and say, "Hey, look, this is what happened last year." Yeah, all right. you, you know the great thing about us is we got most of our guys back. So you really, you really don't have to say anything. They, they know exactly what happened. We left that thing, and they embarrassed us. I mean, as a team now, it, it was the whole deal. We only rushed for 90 yards. You know, we pride ourselves, um, you know, on that winning up front. So you just got to do it. I mean, they're, they're, they're a good team, and uh, I don't have to say much. I mean, our guys know. Uh, it's a new year. It's a completely new year. But at the same time, when you have experiences, whether you're a player or a coach, you remember them, and uh, we got to respond. This game is always a physical one. How tough is that after another road trip? To, to, to turn yeah, that's just part of it in the SEC. I mean, you're, you're exactly right. Every time we play Mississippi State, it doesn't matter if it was 2009, 10, or this year. It's a physical game. That's just just part of the rivalry, and that's part of uh, part of uh, playing a good team. And last week was a physical game. There's no doubt about it. But you know, we we, we, knew, we knew that when we signed up. For, I mean, you're in, you're in this league each week. It's going to be physical. And you know you got to prepare for that, and I think our guys are are, are prepared for that. Um, conditioning wise, I think we got the guys can do it. We just got to get out there and, and execute it and do it. Does the fact that they embarrassed you last year kind of help you guys remain focused the week instead of potentially looking ahead to the top? Yeah, the, yeah, that 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 A and M game that's behind us, and, and and playing the next week, we don't care who we're playing next week. We got our hands full, and our guys understand that. I mean, you can't even think about that, and, and I really don't think anybody has. As a matter of fact, that's the first time I thought about it. So, you know, credit, we're playing a really good team. Uh, it's our first SEC road game, and and the key is you got to get better. Yeah, we're happy. We we beat a good team on the road. Okay, that was that was a big win, but that's behind us. And really, after our team meeting on Sunday, you could tell it's behind us. They've already flipped the page, and that, they've got our attention, and they should. And uh, so, no, we're not, we're not even thinking about it. You know, we're hoping. Uh, we'll see if he practices today. I know he is improving. Um, you know, so we'll, we'll, we'll see if he is able to practice today, and I'll, I'll give an update on Thursday. Gus, you seem more animated in general. I mean, on the sidelines, on the TV, we're able to see you kind of getting hot a little bit. After the game the other day, you were showing a lot of emotion. Yeah. Are you kind of letting yourself – Expressing yourself more now, or is this a new guy? I don't know. I'm just trying to do everything I can to help our team win, be the best coach I can be for Auburn and our players. That's really all I'm trying to do. Yeah, with the with the freshman quarterback and some injuries, receivers, how much, how big has it been for that defense to kind of step up each game? Oh, it's 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 been it's been very very beneficial. Um, 
you know, they've uh, they played very good football, um, you know, all year. You know, you think back to the two-lane game and offensively really struggled, but our defense really rose up when we were struggling and, you know, allowed us to get to the second half and start, start moving the ball. And, you know, characteristics of good teams is they complement each other. And uh, so there's going to be a time that the offense is going to have to help the defense. I, we, we know that, but we've got good chemistry. And uh, our guys, like I said, we got some veteran guys. They know we got a freshman quarterback. And so, but he is improving. And like I said before, I think he'll continue to improve. He's still learning as he goes now. I mean, and, uh, but uh, he's, got, he's got the potential to keep improving, and I expect he'll do that. Have there been any pleasant surprises on defense? No, we know what you got on the front line. Uh, I don't know about pleasant surprise. I mean, really, we felt like we knew what we were going to get for the most part with our guys through spring and fall camp and the fact that we have so many guys back. And so and then you got a lot of guys that have been – that played in big games before too. So, you know, when you play in a big games, you know, whether it's SEC championship two years ago, whatever, you get the – I mean, there, there's nothing like experience that can help you moving forward. And we got some leaders that, that have been there and done that. Yeah. I mean, in this league, you have to have that. I mean, you have to have that if you're going to be a good team. You got to have, uh, you know, your impact players have to show up, and make plays. That if things break down, they're still capable of making plays, and you know that's very important. And I think we got a couple guys that can do that, and we got to continue to build upon that. Uh, yeah, I mean, and, and like I told you after spring and fall camp, I mean, I, I didn't think we were going going to have too too much, if any, of a letdown. And so far, we hadn't. I mean, those guys are playing downhill. They're playing with great physicality. They're tackling well. You know, some teams have tried to match up their their running backs on them and pass situation, but uh, I think they've played uh, played uh, fantastic so far. Over, over the years, when you've had to start a true freshman quarterback, whether it be Bo, mm -hmm. Jerry, Mitch. How have you handled them differently than, say, when you have a Jarrett Stidham or yeah. Nick Marshall in years? Yeah, you got, you got to be a little more patient because uh, you got to understand they're still learning. Um, you got to kind of put yourself in their shoes a little bit. That man, if you just you, you, they got to be confident. There's that fine line between um, you know making sure that um, you know they're ready when to get on them, when not. But more than anything, I think for a true freshman is who's ever the play caller or the coordinator. You got to have great relationships, and they need to make sure that you know you're with them, right? and that you got their back. I think that's the number one thing for a young quarterback, just to know that you know we're, we're, we're with you. And uh, yes, you're going to make some mistakes. So what? Don't make the same mistake twice. Uh, we believe in you, and uh, that's really you know what we've tried to do so far. Coach, how important is it to stick with like being committed to the running game while while Nick is still learning? I think it's real important. I mean, I think that's that's his best friend, you know. I mean, if you're able to run the football. And here with us, I mean, we're Auburn. I mean, we, we, we need to be successful running the football. And when we've had our good teams, we could do that. But you got a freshman quarterback, that's his best friend. And, uh, you know, I think um, obviously the better we can run the football, which we have, we have improved, you know. We were we were just okay at first, and and I think we've got potential to keep improving. And, uh, you know, him keeping it has a lot to do with, with that, too. And you can see that uh, he's able to, to get some yards keeping it, too, and that opens everything else up. Has that added a different dynamic for you guys you haven't had in a couple of years or a few years for that matter? You know, well, I mean, I think any time your quarterback keeps it, I don't know what he's averaging, you know, five, six times a game. I, mean, I just think that's a different dynamic, um, kind of those plus one runs from a defensive standpoint that you just can't gear up on – on the running back or, or whatever. So I, I know that that helps. How much has Spencer Nye contributed to the Yeah, Spencer Nye has been, been – uh, he's done a great job. Uh, he's playing with great physicality. Um, made a great play on Joey Gatewood's uh, touchdown pass. Uh, you know, he had the first guy. The first guy was a little patient. And then they had a guy blitzing off the edge, and he knocked him off so Joey could step up. And, and then the last play of the game when we ran the split zone read – 
uh, just did a super job, was on the outside shoulder, kept driving his feet and allowed us to, to get the, uh, the first down. So he's one of those dirty work guys that kind of gets overlooked, but uh, he's playing really good football for us right now. Yeah, I mean, he, he's a really good inside the, the tackle runner, um, you know, and uh, you can tell that he's more comfortable this year than he was last year, which that's to be expected. I think he's slowing down a little bit and letting plays develop. So he's just he's running back with more experience than he had you know, last year. You, you know, that's a good question. This week, uh, we're hoping he's healthier than he was. You saw him, he did, was on the kickoff return, so he was good enough to play. But we'll uh, we'll see how he's doing. But he's a guy that we we wanted to get some touches for probably the last three weeks. Uh, but just, you know, he either wasn't there or the game didn't present the right situation. How's Cedric Jackson? Uh, he's going to practice today. We're hoping that we have him this week. Um, I don't know more of Thursday. He's wanting to, but you know he had that high ankle sprain, and sometimes those take a little bit longer. And um, but that'll be a big plus when we do get him back. The conversations you have with Dillingham in the game, mm -hmm. how does it kind of work? Does he suggest plays to you, or do you talk to him about what? Yeah, well, you, you know, you have a game plan, and if I'm in rhythm, he doesn't need to say much other than the down and distance. But sometimes you get out of rhythm or whatever, and the more than anything is we're on the same page. We prep the what ifs. If they do this, what do we need to call it? If they do that, hey, what's the matchup? Where is number 24? So he gives a lot of great information. Um, he's really wise beyond his years. I mean, I've been real impressed. But, of course, he learned from Mike Norvell, in which I believe Mike Norvell is one of the best offensive guys in all of college football. So it's been very natural. I thought it would be. And, and it has. And then Cody Burns, you know, does a good job, too. He knows our offense inside and out. He gives some great information, too. So, really, both those guys have been uh, very valuable uh, as far as gathering information. Is there anybody with kind of four games in the season that has played the four games that you're uncertain whether you want to register or not? Uh, you know, not this point. I mean, I, I think we're starting to kind of identify, you know, what we have. Uh, our guys know – pretty clear about, you know, whether they're going to help on special teams and everything that goes with that. And But at the same time, we got to stay healthy. And uh, so. I'm going to ask about your final play in the first half. Is that still Woody? And, I mean, obviously Tulane made big headlines the night before yeah. running that. Did you see that and go, I'm going to bring that out? Maybe. No, you know, we ran against Washington last year. Yeah. And it was, and so we had it, matter of fact, against Tulane. And we were going to run against Tulane. They called timeout. So I don't know if you remember that. Was that the one with Joey in the game? The no, no, that was for our first game. No, right before half, we were going to run it. And they saw it and they called timeout. Oh, okay. So, but I didn't know they had it in their, their you deal. You didn't hear about Tulane running Yeah, I did. But I didn't know that. I didn't know they had it. I just wondered if they called timeout. Like they, they knew something was up. The broadcasters on the broadcast were like, that's the Tulane play. And yeah. You've been running it for 10 years. Yeah, that's okay. Everybody steals stuff. I probably stole it from somebody way back when, so, you know. Gus, talking about Cedric Jackson, this is kind of the second straight game you've used James Jones Moss. Yeah. Is that just a product of blocking? Yeah, J James is a very reliable guy that we have a lot of trust in, and he can catch a football too and run too, but just, um, you know, just starting to define some roles for some guys and, uh, you know, trying to develop depth. And he did a good job when he was in there. Yeah, that's another one, you know. So he's a talented guy, you can tell. And so each game we're trying to grow his package, you know, and continue to develop him, um, getting the ball to some more running backs, you know, which you've asked me that numerous times. And so we're starting to do that. And I think that's helping, you know, overall. Did you like the way that played out, though, with Booby? I did. I, I did. Yeah, I think that was really – that's probably one of the keys to the game, you know, because he was fresh. Um, and he broke some tackles, you know, that, that one drive. I mean, there was some, there was three really, really impressive runs on that drive. I think you carry, what, five different colored pens when you're on the field when coaching? Yeah, they change from week to week. Oh, and so people can't tell what you're writing? No. No, I really hadn't even thought about that. Probably need to start thinking about that. But, <laughs> but no, just yeah, I kind of get in routines about things I want to circle, ideas, especially first half, you're gathering information. Uh, for what, how they're playing, and you're wanting to prepare for halftime. 
So to make sure you have your thoughts in order for halftime, because halftime's a real short deal. You've got to make decisions in about four to five minutes of what you're going to do in the second half. And so a lot of those are just circling certain things or making a few notes that can help you at halftime. You know, we've had them on the field a few times already. Um, you know, the good thing is it gives us flexibility with both those guys um, for to be creative later on. Maybe this week, you never know. But, you know, both of them we have confidence in. And, uh, yeah, both of them we have confidence in. What makes Kyle Hill special as a running back? Because he's, I mean, he's explosive. He can run. He breaks tackles. Um, you know, I saw that one play he dove from outside the five-yard line and just like, whoa. Um, and he's a veteran guy. I mean, you know, he's been there and done that, and he's he's one of the best in our league. Uh, is what I believe. Noah. Uh, well, he's a great competitor. First, I mean, he is. He's one of the best competitors we have on our team, and he never takes a playoff in practice. Um, there's times in games he may get a little nicked and all that. You try to put somebody, he don't want nobody. I mean, he's that guy that really leads by example. And, uh, you know, he, he's one of our best all-around players. Coach, you guys are up four right now. This is like a stranger to the conversations building after two impressive wins about you guys being, placing yourselves in the argument for like a late season, like college football playoff run. How do you tell your guys to block that out, block out the media noise and stay concentrated? Yeah, hey, we, we, we're we're pretty isolated. Uh, I told them we're, we're not worried about any kind of talk like that until you get to end of November, because that's all that matters. Right now, it don't make, it don't make any difference. You look every year, you get teams that are hot early, and then they fizzle out. It makes zero. All it all that matters is Mississippi State. So we'll let it take care of itself. We could care less about what people's opinions are. We could care less about Final Four. We care about Mississippi State, and it really it's as simple as that. And if you let crap like that distract you, then it hurts you. So I don't think we'll have any problem with that. Anything else? All right, All right thanks.